All right, hey, Hades Mega here, and we're here for our 25,000 mile Toyota Care service, all right? And we're here at um, um, Stevens Creek Toyota to get the last one done, all right? So I believe it's uh, two years or 25,000 miles, and I managed to get 25,000 miles for two years. I think my, it's uh, it's June, and I think I purchased this in September, so pretty, pretty close. <laughs> and... Um, from what I know, they're not really gonna do anything. <laughs> okay, they're pretty much gonna rotate the tires. I got newer. I got new tires. I got a uh, Falcon Wild Peaks. All right, I bought them from some dude that I had them on his uh, Toyota Rav4 Adventure. All right, so that's that's a scoop. All right, uh, we'll go take our last walk around the dealership. And uh, okay, there she is. I've turned her over to uh, the service department. So let's go. Uh, let's go take a walk around the, the dealership for like the last time. <laughs> um, so yeah. So this is gonna be my last uh, Toyota Care service, and uh, that's and that's what the guy said when I when I came in. So yeah. All right, guys. Um, we're here in the front of the the dealership building, and I. Uh, so I'm gonna shoot my 25,000 mile vlog here. All right. So what has happened in 25,000 miles? Uh, Pretty much uh, nothing, uh, nothing uh, exciting. <laughs> okay, um, the vehicles ran great. I haven't really had any problems with it, other than uh, other than the the heat pump noise, and uh, it's doesn't uh, it's not gonna make that noise right now because it's kind of warm right now. You can see I'm wearing like a t-shirt right now, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So it's uh, the car has been really good for 25,000 miles. I would say um, pretty much the only thing I've gone through is tires. Okay. Um, I, I replaced my uh, my stock tires, the Dunlops, uh, recently with Falcon Wild Peak uh, AT tires. Um, yeah, and uh, other than the tires wearing out pretty fast, I, I, I wish it'd last a little bit longer. Um, yeah, but I got a pretty good deal on some Falcon Wild Peaks. I got them for 300 bucks a while back, and I finally put them on. Uh, I wound up buying a motorcycle, so I don't have money to buy aftermarket wheels. So that was supposed to be the plan was to buy aftermarket wheels and then sell my old wheels with the wild peaks on them with some good meat on them so somebody would want to buy them you know <laughs> and uh and yeah so we're just gonna have to wait a little bit till i can get some more funds for the aftermarket wheels i still want them all right but well actually the stock wheels have grown on me you know i i, I do like them and it, and with the wild peaks they look badass <laughs> I, li I like the look of the with the the stock wheels with the uh, wild peaks all right it's um uh, so driving with the Wild Peaks, it's a little, I know it's a little bit of a review, but yeah, for, for right, right now, um, they're okay. They grip as much as the Dunlops and uh, they're a little bit, they're a little bit noisy. Uh, they're pretty new tires too, so they shouldn't be noisy. And, um, and yeah, and they're pretty, there's, it, the, the vehicle not, rides nice and smooth. Um, I haven't had any problems with the hybrid system. Um, yeah. The car has been running really good, all right, for 25,000 miles. So from here on out, Hades Mega's plan is to um, is to do the services on my own, all right. So now the ball's in my court now, all right. So 25,000 miles. What did they? Uh, well, we'll go over it when when we get the the paper back, all right. Um, pretty much, they're not going to do anything, all right. They're going to check all the fluid levels. They should be cleaning the hybrid inverter air filter. Um, I will. I will check that when I go home. Um, I I've been dri driving around in some kind of dusty places. I think they're just supposed to do like ins do like a, a an ins inspection on the vehicle, and that's pretty much it. There's nothing. Oh, rotate the tires. So they'll probably rotate the tires, even though they're freaking brand new. Like, uh, last time they did not rotate my tires, all right, because they said my tires were too worn out. We're not going to rotate them. So I'm like, does it make sense? Uh, you should rotate them if they're worn out. <laughs> if you don't rotate them, they're by, you know they won't last as long, type of thing. All right, but I, I don't know for whatever reason the last time uh, for the the old tires, the stock tires, they wore kind of funny. Um, one of the tires wore more than the other, so that leads me to believe I probably need a wheel alignment. All right, uh, it's probably you know the wheel alignment's probably not good after like twenty something thousand miles. So, and Hades Mega has been driving his. Rav4 off-road and stuff, and it, you know it gets bumped. Hit, I'm running over bumps and potholes and rocks and stuff, and yeah, it could affect the alignment. So probably should have got an alignment done uh, when I got the new tires put on. Uh, maybe, 
if I get a chance, if, if I get some funds out, we'll go, we'll go get a wheel alignment done. But, uh, but yeah, it's, there's pretty much no, no major service going on today, guys. It's, should be pretty quick, is what I'm say, all right? Should be a quick, uh, quick service, is what I'm gonna say. Um, pretty much all they're gonna do is rotate the tires, all right? Um, since I got new tires, then they should do it, right? So, <laughs> unlike last time. Okay, uh, so yeah, let's go, uh, Let's go uh, walk around and see what they got on the lot, and then uh, that's the last time I'm going to do this, so it's kind of sad. But I, I probably will be coming back here to get parts and stuff, and if there's any kind of recalls and stuff. Um, there, is, there has been some kind of like a little, uh, like a warning thing I got in the mail from Toyota. I will do a separate video on that. I, I keep on forgetting to do it. It's about a fuel leak, all right? The, some of these RAV4s have like develop a fuel leak and that's that's not a good thing <laughs> okay but I, I i don't smell any fuel anywhere in my rav4 so that's a good thing okay um oh my god what the hell all right anyway twenty-five thousand miles vehicles ran great i haven't had any problems with the uh with the charging system at all i charge it pretty much every day i would say i probably the majority of the time i drive it on ev in EV mode, all right, I'm able to charge it, and uh, and then the rest of the time on hybrid mode. Well, what, basically, the only times I use hybrid mode is if I go on long trips, and you know that's that was his intended uh, kind of usage, all right, the Rav4. Uh, I know some people they don't even charge their vehicle. <laughs> it's got this a big sense, man. Um, EV mode is freaking awesome, all right. <laughs> I love you driving around in EV mode. It's got plenty of power in EV mode, and when you want the full power, well, you just stick it in hybrid mode. But I, I you know, high, um, the EV mode is perfectly fine to drive around uh, on the on the streets, all right, in the freeway. It's it's plenty of power, all right, plenty of power. For me, coming from like a Prius, it's it's plenty of power. Okay. Anyway, let's go. Uh, let's go take a walk around and uh, see what they got. Right. Aha, here we go. We've got four Toyota Highlanders. There you go. Brand new. Gets to like 24 miles per gallon. Uh, like half of what my RAV4 gets. <laughs> All right. Truth be told, if they sold a Highlander Prime, I would probably buy I, pro I would have bought that instead of the RAV4. All right. One of my complaints about the RAV4 is I wish it was a little bit longer. All right. And I and you get you'll get a little bit longer vehicle with the Highlander. I, the only thing I don't like about the Highlander is it kind of get that minivan look, man. <laughs> it does, it does look like a minivan, man. This is a minivan without the sliding doors, you know? Um, and that's kind of like what the Sienna is, <laughs> okay? Um, yeah. And it, once if they had a Sienna Prime, I would probably buy that, you know? But I don't know if I could sleep in the Sienna because you can't take the seats off. At least you can put the seats down on the RAV4. Anyway, they got four of them. All right, they got a four, the good old forerunner here, and oh, look at this! They've got the BZ4X. So there it is, Toyota electric vehicle. All right, totally produced by Toyota. I, I believe I shot a video about it. Uh, I shot, I saw one here earlier. Oh, there's, they got, they got three of them. Look at that. So they've got a silver one. And they've got silver, yeah, they only got the silver one, apparently. So it's like a kind of like a two-tone color. It's like a silver and uh, black, or like metal metallic black. Pretty cool. Can I get in it? Can I get it? No. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lot like a RAV4. It's pretty cool. So yeah, it's it's roughly like a it's it's a lot like a Rav4. I've I've seen the inside of it. It's very similar to a Rav4. Okay, I think the charge port is right here, and then there's a there's no gasoline cap. <laughs> All right, and here's some Mirai, good old Mirai. I'm I'm hoping that the uh, hydrogen thing will take off. All right. I, if it was uh, if it was uh, easier to get hydrogen, then yeah, I would uh, go with the hydrogen. Part. I'm pretty happy with the plug-in hybrid, though. So I think I, 
be happy with that. That is 104 MPGE. It's roughly the same. It's actually better than the RAV4. The RAV4 is like 90 something, 94. So this is a BZ4X Limited. It's 46,000. So it's a little more. Oh, this is a Limited, right? So this is probably XLE. This might be a higher end model. This one gets like 46,000. So it's about the same price as like maybe a RAV4 Prime XSE or something. We got the Tundra, man. Tundra. We need to move some big stuff. Tundra is the one for you. Okay, we got hybrid Corolla, Camrys, another Mirai, the older Mirai. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't think this is a, yeah, that's a Sienna, but that's not a, I don't think that's for sale. There's another Highlander. Oh, I thought that was my car. <laughs> it's a RAV4. That's what, that's what the 17's on there. I would like to get 17's for mine. Oh, here, here's a new Prius. <laughs> yeah, there it is. It's a pretty sleek looking car. It's already got plates on it. Oh, it's a rent a car. Okay, so these are, if you wanted to rent one of the new Priuses, there you go, you could do it. Pretty cool. So this probably already got some miles on it maybe if somebody rented it or it looks brand new actually. So this is kind of like a pearl color. They don't have any stickers on it guys. Here's like the door handle. I think, yeah, it's, it's a button. They don't they don't have like a, so this is, I guess this is a lock button and this is the, the button to open it. It's got a teeny tiny little fuel door. It's kind of cool. Oh, this is the Prime. Oh yeah. The interesting thing to know, I didn't even know the difference. <laughs> it looks, the Prime looks just like the hybrid version. Yeah. So that's an interesting thing about the Prius. Uh, the, the, uh, the regular the hybrid Prius and the Prime look different. That's what I want to say. Um, in this case, they look the same. So you can see this one has a fuel door or charge port and it's not excessively big like the RAV4 Prime. <laughs> okay, okay. The, the fuel the, the fuel things are uh, pretty small. All right, I guess this is one is the uh, the charge oh there it is, you can open it. There it is. That's a charge port, guys. It opens just like the RAV4 Prime. Okay, it's a little bit smaller than the RAV4 Prime. It is a little bit bigger than the gas one. Pretty cool. Does it have a cover for it? There's no cover. Yeah, the the Rav4 Prime has a cover, a cover for the thing, but uh, this one doesn't have it. Maybe they, I don't know, maybe they didn't install it. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, but yeah, for the most part, it looks exactly like the hybrid. All right. Oh, the front looks nice, man. It's kind of cool looking. They really knocked it up out of the park with the the look of this but they said it's not as utility friendly the, one of the awesome things about the Prius is that uh it had a, a higher roof line and you can put a lot of stuff in it all right that you, you kind of lose some of that with this all right but it is a nicer looking car and it's faster pretty cool it costs, stock it comes with stock it comes with 19s can we get in it no, <laughs> the fuel door opens, but, <laughs> but yeah, that's how you would charge it. Pretty cool. I think they have power lift gates also now, so or the the trunk comes up by itself, just like the Rav4 Prime. All right. So this is a XSE Prime. Pretty rad. It says Prius back here. All right. It says Prius down there. So you definitely they want you to know that this is a Prius. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's got a sporty looking back, that's for sure, man. Kind of like that, that Roadster kind of look, almost. Yeah, if the front was longer. And uh, the interior looks a lot like the uh, BZ4X. So you'll notice here, there's no, there's no charge port, right? Over here is the gas cap. Okay, the fuel, the fuel door. Cool. Maybe we can find one for sale here, I'm not sure. I think I heard that these are gonna kinda of be hard to get. <laughs> so we'll say. Especially the Prime. Anyway, I'll take some pictures of it. Okay, there you go. That's the uh, fifth generation uh, Prius and Prius Prime. Pretty cool. Awesome.
We got another Highlander and a Tacoma. Aha, what's this? This looks like a, it's not a Prime. It's a hybrid. I think it's a hybrid, yeah. It's because it doesn't have like the little honeycomb, uh, the, the diamond grill. It's got the shiny plastics though. I hate these make it's kind of, um, Kind of, um, I don't know. Hades Wing is kind of going back and forth on the shiny plastics. All right, on the uh, regular Rav4, they have. Uh, yeah, they, they, they got one right here. Man. <laughs> anyway, they, this one has the glossy plastics, and then there's some that just is just unpainted plastic. And I would kind of, I, I kind of like the unpainted one because you don't have to worry about scratching it. This uh, glossy painted stuff, it scratches so easily, man. It's a scratch, you really notice it, right? But yeah, this is a hybrid. R4 hybrid. Okay. Aha, yeah, so here's the unpainted plastic trim. <laughs> I think it probably holds up better to scratches and stuff. I mean, that's the reason they put it there. It's a kind of rugged vehicle and they think you're going to take it off-road and stuff. and You don't care about it being shiny. <laughs> but it does look nice if it's shiny, I'll tell you that. All right, we've got plenty of Mirais here. Future. Plenty of, holy moly. Are they planning on selling all these? How, how much do you want of these go for now? These are all brand new cars. This is definitely a uh, Mirai. And they're all just, this whole, this whole row is Mirais. Yeah, this is a $52,000 car, guys. Pretty, pretty pricey. I wonder if they, they still pay, pay for the fuel. It's a good question. I don't know if it's gotten better over the years. I hear stuff about uh, fuel cell cars. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. All right, but anyway, yes, all Mirais. All right, here we got uh, four runners, a Highlander, a Rav4, uh, another more Rav4, lots of Rav4s. Man, I have to say. Uh, uh, from the pandemic times to, to now, like the, the lot is a lot more full than it was before. <laughs> okay, anyway, I think this is a used one. There's a used one. another used one. And it's a Rav4 for sale, guys, if you want one. Here's a shiny one. It's the blueprint color. It's a hybrid. This is the other color I would have bought my Rav4 in. Okay. Got a Benza here, Benza hybrid. And another RAV4. Alright, it's got the it's got some shiny wheel covers on it. <laughs> Alright, we got some tacos there. Aha, look, All right. I found a Prius. There we go. Let's check out the stickers. This is a brand new one. I don't know if they put the stickers on it yet. It doesn't look like it. Oh it's already it's already been bought. <laughs> Fleet vehicle not for sale. Oh, okay. They probably sold it to some. Yeah, they sold it to like a. It's a fleet vehicle. So they sold it to some kind of business or something. Look at those wheel covers, man. Woo! That's an arrow wheel cover, guys. I wonder what it looks like without the covers on. It's probably a lot nicer. It's right next to a uh, RSX. Very, very low RSX. And it still it looks the part, man. It looks sporty. The, uh, the RSX is a sports car, right? <laughs> and here's a uh, somebody's uh, 86 here. It's a GR86, nice. And here's a one. Here's one in blue. All right, I think it looks good in blue. I like it. It's kind of like a, almost like a purple color. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna find a new Prius around here. Uh, we got more Marais. Dude, they got more Marais. A lot of Marais, man. Toyota's hoping to sell them. But for $50,000, that's kind of a thing. <laughs> I think a lot of people are leasing these is what's going on. All right, and then we got some more. Oh, hey, look, there's a RAV4 with, uh, with the side molding, all right? It looks kind of funny. <laughs> it goes past the... I know, something's not right there, man. Like, that's a, not a stock side molding. Let's take a look at it. This looks like an adventure or something, and it doesn't look like it's for sale. Maybe. Yeah, it's like a 2020 something. It's a lot like mine, okay? It has, I think it's a Toyota Super, I think it's Super White. Let's take a look at it. 
yeah it's a super white it doesn't have any pearly stuff on it no painted bumpers it's got the you can tell they're doing some kind of adventure in with it they got the tow hook out there so this one does have a tow hook that leads me to believe i think this is a prime no it's not a prime because it has the unpainted bumpers but it's got this body side molding stuff it looks kind of ugly man it doesn't look like the one on the on my car yeah it's just a regular rav4 this has something aero precision pretty cool oh yeah and one thing you'll notice is it's got falcon wild peaks just like my rav4 now um these are falcon wild peak at trails these are not the uh, these are not the uh, uh, the ones that come with the vehicle. They're um, what size are these? Yeah. So okay, these are the uh, the retail version of the uh, um, Falcon Wild Peak. Okay, they're not the ones that come with a Rav4 because they're 19s. All right, it's a 235, 55, 19. Um, I wouldn't run 19s for all all terrain, you know. But you can definitely tell they've been taking it off-roading <laughs> because the, the sidewalls are all scuffed. That are like they're parking on the left side of the road and they're scuffing up the wheel. But yeah, that's one of the features of the Falcon Wild Peak. It has stronger sidewalls, all right? So rocks and stuff don't cut it, all right? It's for all-terrain stuff. It's, it's a mean-looking tire, guys. But so this is a little different. This has a tread wear of, what is it? 600 or something. A pretty good tread wear. This is going to last a long time. All right, it has traction A and temperature A. Uh, I believe my tire was the Falcon Wild Peak uh, 01 Alpha. Uh, the ones that the, the OEM ones that come with the Rav4 Adventure is uh, like uh, 300, 300 treadwear and uh, traction. Uh, traction is B and uh, I think it's traction A and temperature B, something like that. They're like a watered down tr uh, um, Wild Peak, is what I want to say. <laughs> Um, so I'm probably going to wind up getting a set like this later. You know, this one's sh this one should last twice as long as the ones that are on my vehicle. I'm expecting mine to probably last until my vehicle is like 50,000 miles, like pretty much the same as the stock tires. If I ride like a like a goon, you know, drive like a goon, man. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that's cool. This is a very similar to my. It looks a lot like mine, but you can tell they've done some kind of off-roading with it. Sure. <laughs> All right. And that body, body side molding, it's kind of ugly looking, man. It looks like it doesn't belong there. <laughs> I think the stock Toyota one looks better. I like the the Katana blades, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. So we get another Prius. So we got two Priuses here. They're they're really going to start uh, cranking out these Priuses, Toyota. They, they got a real winner here. So I want to say you're going to see a lot of these on the road. So here's one. This one is already uh, bought. Super dirty. This one looks like it's already been bought. All right, and these are all the hybrid versions. Okay, not the plug-in hybrid. This one is for Kristen. Kristen. Okay. There's another one right here. Oh, these are all the vehicles they got today off the truck. They're gonna put all the stuff on them. So they have. They don't haven't put all the, the. They haven't taken all the plastics and stuff off of them. Here's a Prius. All will drive Prius. It's all will drive. Alright, not for sale. It's for it's for Kristen again. <laughs> Kristen has the keys to it. Okay, all will drive. Nice. I heard the all-wheel drive system is much stronger on these. Um, the, the rear motor's got a lot more power. There's a BZ4X. Just zipping around. I didn't hear it coming. I saw it. <laughs> okay. Um, is another fleet vehicle for sale. Lots hey, of we got a GR Corolla. There we go. I bet you it's not for sale. <laughs> Somebody already bought it. It's uh, like a super white. Yeah, it looks super white. There it is. It's got the manual. Man, I would love to drive one of these. <laughs> I saw one of these the last time I was here, so yeah there it is it's got most of the tr trims it's all got all the stuff on it uh, all the protective plastics are taken off look at how big that grill is courtesy vehicle not for sale huh I don't know. it's a scoop of that it's all dirty and stuff look at those big brakes man take up the whole wheel well 
All right. Okay, and then uh, yeah, all these are. I think these just they just took these off of the truck. Uh, these are Rav, a bunch of Rav fours. Some of them are hybrids. There's a BZ4X there. There's a BZ4X over there. All right. There's those. Uh, there's those. Uh, Dunlop Grand Trek PT20s. Uh, not my favorite tire, guys. <laughs> okay, but it gets the job done. It'll get you from point A to point B, <laughs> and you could do some off-roading with it apparently. All right. There's two BZ4Xs. All right, a gray one okay, and a black one. Okay, with that, one. that ends our uh, lot, uh, our, um, that ends our uh, our tour of the uh, the vehicles they got on the lot at uh, Stevens Creek Toyota. All right, uh, my, my camera battery ran out of juice, so I'm using my phone now. So uh, anyway, yeah, so that was it. There's a lot of vehicles here, guys. <laughs> this is like not like when it was pandemic, all right? So now, yeah, we're kind of officially out of the pandemic. You notice I'm not wearing my mask or anything. Yeah, uh, so when I bought my mat, <laughs> when I bought my RAV4, it was still pandemic, okay? So yeah, there's a lot more vehicles than, uh, than there are uh, there were back then, man. I'll tell you that. Uh, all these uh, all these dealerships look like freaking like ghost towns, man. <laughs> They're like no cars, man. They're all gone, all all sold. So it's good to see that like things are starting to pick up again. There's lots of vehicles on the lot. Hey, chicken, look. Hey, look at this. this is an OG uh, RAV4, man. Look at that. I don't think I've ever seen this one. It's got like a hard top. It's got a hard top and a like a, a window in the back. I've never seen one like this. It looks like a little wagon. It's so cute looking. So this is what the RAV4 used to look like, guys. <laughs> but this is the RAV4 I remember when it first came out. Yeah, it's got a it's got a curt hitch. It's a it's a two inch hitch too. It's pretty big. Look at the exhaust cutouts and everything there. This is pretty cool. You can tell this has been taken well, well taken care of. It's got a full size spare in the back. It's a manual too. Look at it. Oh, look the seat. The seats are in great shape. I think I seen one of these in the junkyard one time. Um, I think that's the only time I've seen one. Yeah, these are kind of uh, rare to see nowadays. So I want to say it's got a tow bar on the front. So they they're towing this with like a um, uh, what is it? Uh, a RV or something. That's pretty rad. It's so cute. <laughs> it's so cute. It's it's in great shape. It's got a little bit of rust on top of it. But yeah, look at that. Pretty cool. I like it. So this is the OG RAV4, I think it's the first gen, the X as a X1 or something. X10. It's got the tow bars and everything. They they must take it. This must be their like kind of vehicle they use to drive around when they're not driving the RV. <laughs> cool. Yeah, check it out, man. They got a Highlander, man. Let's go take a sit in it. Ooh, looks nice, man. The interior looks pretty. You know, it's got this red, like it's a sports car or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever sat. Uh, you know what? I think I have sat in one of these, but it's uh Oh, look at this screen. It's sweet, man. Howdy. <laughs> it's huge. I know. I wish my RAV4 had a screen that big. <laughs> so it's got a, it's got a gauge cluster very similar to the RAV4. Um, it's got like analog gauges for the like the needles and stuff, and then the, and then like a thing in here. It's pretty cool. It's got uh, some kind of automatic something. Oh, I think this might be the. There's a you can turn the engine on and off. I don't think this might be. This might not be a hybrid. There's an automatic high beam, a power lift gate. Um, there's a little compartment here. This reminds me of my my Galant VR4 has something just like that. <laughs> it's kind of cool. All right, there's your odometer stuff here. It's a little different than the Rav4, yeah. Yeah, it looks different, a lot different than the Rav4. It's not. It's got heated seats here. I I guess there's a cooled seats. It's got a shifter very similar to the Rav4. Um, it's got the, all the USB get stuff here. There's lots of compartments and everything. Lots of compartments. More than the RAV4. They're kind of, it's more spacious than the RAV4 for sure, man. You got your drive modes here. Parking brake. Uh, more drive modes. Traction control. Snow mode. And then your drive modes are here. And we've got cup holder. Like it looks very similar to the one on the Rav4, except it's instead of being here, it's like over here. Um, you know what? I kind of like this better. 
I would rather have the shifter closer to me, you know. Um, sometimes I feel like I have to reach all the way here to get to the shifter, and I kind of don't like it. I, I'd rather have the shifter over here. Like, I guess if you were in Japan, you were driving on the right side, then yeah, you know. But if we're in America, I would rather have the shifter on the left, to tell you the truth. So, yeah. What is this little button here? Not sure. Okay, here's the uh, thing. Oh, I like this. It goes, slides in and out. It's not as... I kind of like the material better on the RAV4, but this is kind of cool. It's a sliding thing. It Does it open? Oh, it doesn't open. It's just like a little door that opens and closes. So I kind of... It would be nice if it was like the Prius, uh, like my mom's Prius, where this, it slides back and then you, but you can still open it, you know, but you can't do that with this. I think this is like an armrest. Oh yeah, it's kind of arm, it's like a combination armrest too. Interesting. It's got a big glove box too. Lots of space. Lots of space. Yeah, I want to go sit in the back. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, there it is. So this is the back seats, man. Oh, dude, this is a comfortable place to be. More comfortable than the RAV4. It is. It's got way more leg room than the RAV4. <laughs> Look at, yeah, the high ladder, man. But it's only two seats in the front, man. Can't do the three seats. All right, they got a big ass cup holder here. But I'll tell you this: the the middle seat in the RAV4 is like not the not comfortable one. That's the one that you don't want to be sitting in. <laughs> That's like, yeah, if I have to go take a trip across town, it's all right, but not a long journey. And that's what it looks like from the back. Oh, it is so luxurious back here, though. Look at this. Let's see how the... There, there should be a third row seat. That's one thing that the RAV4 doesn't have. Oh, yeah, there we go. Just scoots forward like that. I don't think we can put it up because we got this big old box there, but yeah, that's the seat right there. Um, yeah, it's actually got some decent space in the back when the seats are up. So I, I, I honestly, I wouldn't want to sit back there, but but this this is this is the premium seat. This is the uh, the VIP seat right here, man. <laughs> Pretty cool. They've got cup holders on each side, tie downs. Uh, I would say. I would say the back is about the same size as the uh, the Rav4. I don't know. If, I don't think you can put the the front seats all the way down. So that's kind of like that's one reason I wouldn't buy this because you couldn't sleep in it, guys. <laughs> it would be nice if this folded flat. Maybe you can make it fold flat. I'm not sure. No, you can't. Yeah. So the seat doesn't fold flat, or does it? I'm not sure. No, you can't get it to fold flat. No? <laughs> okay. Maybe there's a way you can do it. If you can get it to fold flat, then it would be great to sleep in here, you know, but I guess not. Uh, yeah, the trunk is pretty spacious. Look at that. It's about the same size as the RAV4, but if you could put those seats down, you'd have, like, a lot of space. I, I guess they want you to just slide them forward, you know, as for passenger comfort, not cargo you know, utility is not a, it's more a luxury than utility. <laughs> it's a little bit faster than the RAV4. The, trunk, the thing is smaller, it's tall, it's, it's taller than the RAV4. Yeah, so this one is the that not hybrid one. Okay, so I would definitely get the hybrid one. Okay, here we got a Mariah that we can sit in. All right, seventy-two thousand dollars for this one. Yikes! Don't don't scratch up anyone. <laughs> so, just sitting here real quick. I've never. I don't think I've ever sat in an MRI, and I haven't sat in a new MRI. But man, it is nice in here. Look at this screen. Holy moly! You can tell it's got a screen protector in here because there's like a bubbles on it. <laughs> so they didn't put it up right. All right. Yeah. There's me. There's the shifter. It's kind of like the old, the original Prius shifter. Yeah. It's got a park and drive mode. It's got all this piano black plastic stuff here. It's got a charge thing right here. It's It's got a sticky pad on it so your phone doesn't slide around. That's nice. Will my phone fit in there? I don't know. I'm, I'm using my phone right now, guys. So, um, Yeah, it's nice. Man. It's very, yeah. So it's like a lot like a Lexus. That's what they're saying. It's a, a very luxury. There's the button to purge the water. All right. <laughs> You can definitely tell it's a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. 
right? Oh, it's got a, some kind of sunroof thing here. Sunroof cover. It doesn't have a, um, it doesn't have the, uh, the sunglass holder thing. Where do you put your sunglasses? Aha, uh -huh, they didn't think about that, huh? <laughs> For $72,000 car, I would kind of expect a nicer, a little bit nicer interior. I mean, it's nice, I'm not going to lie. But yeah, it's pretty pricey, man. Where's the center? Why don't they just make a fuel cell SUV? Just make a, a RAV4 that's like a SUV, you know? They might be able to sell more of them, you know? <laughs> what a weird looking, uh... It's a weird looking armrest thing. Man. It's weird shape. They they notched it, or they cut it just so you can put your phone here. You know, <laughs> pretty cool. Well, oh, look, they got little um. There's these little shade thingies for the passengers. It's pretty cool. There it is. Sit in the back. Okay, here we go. So I think that front seat must be all the way back because I can barely get in the back, dude. The bag is kind of small, man. Like, you see, there's more space for that. So here we are in the Mirai. Uh, the headroom is is pretty awful, guys. <laughs> like, I, my head barely fits on the back uh, up the, on this thing, man. <laughs> like, if they just notched it just so you could there you would have more. Oh, it's because it's got this. Uh, the sunroof thing, all right. Yeah, it's got this. It's got this thing here, so that kind of cuts into your headroom. But like they, they kind of notched it so your head would fit. My my head is like almost touching it, man. And I almost got no room front and back, man. <laughs> it's for how big the car looks. It's not really that big, is what I say. It's got a hundred watt inverter type thing here. It's got a uh, charge ports here. Um. There is a center seat, but there's this huge freaking hump here. Why is this here? Does this have to be here? Is this where, is this where all the hoses and stuff goes to the hydrogen tank? I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, that might be because of the hydrogen tank. I'm, I'm not sure. I think the hydrogen tank is like right right here behind the, the seat and stuff. But uh, yeah, there it is. That's the inside of a Mirai, guys. Oh yeah, and then there's this uh, cool... Does this come off? How does this come off? Okay, there we go. There's, so there's like a little pull tab here, and then you pull up on it, and you bring it down. Just like that. Okay. That's kind of cool. It's definitely nice for the passenger. Okay, just clips on there. There's these little hooks up here. I like the back. I think, I think we can open it. Let me see. I don't know how to open it. <laughs> Where do you put the hydrogen in? That's a good question. So it's got like two cameras here. There's got to be a button there to... There we go. I found it. Oh, it's kind of hard to open. Okay, that's a trunk space. It's it's kind of a lot and kind of not a lot, is what I'll say. <laughs> What's this here? I don't know. It's a cover for something, man. Don't mess around with it. It's... Yeah, actually, the trunk is kind of small. Like, everything is small for, like, how big the vehicle is. It kind of looks like a really big Camry, is what it looks like, yeah. From Japan, Aichi. That's where my RAV4 was built. Yeah, what are these things? These sensor thingies. Oh, you know what? We didn't look We didn't look for the solar panels for the, the Prius. Let's see if they had them. I don't know if any of those ones had them. So here's the inside. Here's your, your odometer here. There's a HUD. I can't see where it is, but there's like a snow mode. There's like there's a ton of cameras. It looks like there's a bunch of cameras on this, and the one I'm interested in. What is this? Oh, this is the, the cover for the thing. This is oh, there's a trunk pop right here. What's that? Hydrogen. There it is. It looks like a yeah, like an air compressor thing. <laughs> Fuel type. 87.5 MPA, which is 12,690 PSI. Yikes, that's a lot of pressure, man. 12,000 PSI. That's nuts. Okay, here's the pump. Damn, this thing is heavy. Yeah, it's huge, dude. Do you use to fill up with? I guess it goes into like here. 
I guess this is like a little example thing of how it works. Yes. All right. Hey, I'm in the RAV4. All right. So this is uh, so so ends the end. This is the last uh, Toyota Care uh, service vlog. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I've done it pretty much every time I've come in. I found a lot of interesting cars today. All right. Um, BZ4X Prius, the new the fifth gen Prius. They have it. All right. They look like they're selling like hotcakes. I, I think they got a real winner with that one. All right. The RAV4 and the new Prius. Toyota's gonna knock it out of the park, man. You're gonna kick Tesla's ass. <laughs> That's what I say, all right? Hybrid's still still an awesome uh, technology, is what I wanna say, all right? For for many years to come, still, all right? And then, yeah, they still got the hydrogen car. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the tour of the um, the lot, all right? Because it was, uh, they had a lot of vehicles. I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, man, they got so many vehicles here. They had like nothing before, <laughs> man. Like when I bought my RAV4, there was literally like nothing out here, you know? It was crazy. So, yeah. So that was pretty much it. Um, they didn't even give me a paper that told me like what they did and stuff. Uh, they did that in the beginning, but they don't do it anymore. They didn't do it last time. So um, I don't even know if they rotated the tires. I hope so. Um, my, my idea was to put like a, to mark the valve stems with numbers like one, two, three, and four. So I know which way they rotated the tires. All right. But anyway, that's it. Uh, that's the end of my Toyota care. Um, it was two years 25,000 miles and we just did the 25,000 mile one. So that's it uh, He uh, the service advisor tried to sell me like a package with like a, he said the next couple services are like I think three oil changes and tire rotations and stuff. And it was like for $250. Is that worth it? Not really. How much does it cost to change your own oil? Like 50 bucks maybe? maybe a lot less than 50 bucks <laughs> all right yeah i i don't think it this was worth it i'm, I'm gonna do it myself all right so for here from here on out hayes omega is planning to uh to service his own vehicle all right so i will be doing videos on me servicing my vehicle all right not not doing it at the at the toyota service center all right the only reason i would come back here is to one buy parts two um uh, do some kind of recall thing, right? If, there, if there's any kind of recall service that needs to be done, then we come back here, right? I've really only had like two of them, and I'm trying to get a third one done. The the heat pump noise, but it's not uh it's not happening. <laughs> okay, it's a plus. It's warm right now. It's not gonna happen, all right? So um, maybe we'll try to get that thing squared away. I'm, I'm just not gonna worry about it, all right? Hopefully, it's not gonna cause problems in the future. Um, I still kind of kind of got a warranty. Um, hopefully, hopefully the warranty covers the air conditioning system, right? The HVAC system, because that's a crucial part of the, uh, the thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I think, uh, I think at 80,000 miles is somewhere around 80,000 miles. There's a, um, HVAC or air conditioning system, uh, maintenance all right um, they're gonna they have the service in, okay and that is I will probably take it back to Toyota for them to do that I think basically they're gonna they're gonna drain the, the coolant the, the the Freon and stuff and then put it back in and check for lease and stuff um, on the RAV4 Prime it's very important all right from what I heard from the car care guy that you take care of the, the heating and cooling system on this vehicle right more, more specifically the, the, the HVAC system the heating the ven ventilation and AC you take care of that because that is the life of your battery right and it keeps you comfortable inside the, the vehicle all right um, your this vehicle is highly highly dependent on that system all right it heats it cools the cabin and it heats and cools the battery all right um, it, it has a lot of work to do all right and if that goes bad it'll be all bad <laughs> so okay so yeah it's not not gonna be a good thing all right so all right so they didn't really drive it all that much i got 14 miles of ev range um i'm planning to go uh do some doordash right now we're gonna, yeah it's, it's about that doordash time so we're gonna go do do, do, do we're gonna do doordash and i'm gonna try to go home all right um i'm gonna try to go home doing doordash so i'm gonna make some money on the way home that's kind of what i've been using my rav for lately is to uh to make money all right um Literally, this vehicle makes me money, all right? I use it to do DoorDash. This is an excellent DoorDash vehicle, if you guys are wondering, because it has 40 miles of range. Typically, 40 miles is like the may, like the, the most I'll do during a DoorDash, okay? And then um, if I'm kind of low on EV power, I just go out on my motorcycle and DoorDash, okay? <laughs> I have a, a Honda Super Cub that I do uh, a DoorDash in also, so. 
Um, when the charge is low on this, I go out on the, on the Super Cover. For it's a nice to go out for a ride. Lately, it's been kind of hot. Today, it's nice and cool. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So, 25,000 miles. I, this, what a fantastic vehicle. I'm still pretty happy with it. Um, I think when my, my two years of ownership um, uh, anniversary comes around, I will shoot another video about how, how it's been. But so far, it's been great. I've only gone through one pair of tires, and I think they've changed the oil two times. <laughs> two times, all right. The next service will be 30,000 miles, and it is uh, I've changed the air filter. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna, I, I already looked in the book, guys. Change the air filter, clean, clean the cat, or change the cabin filter, and I'm, and I have, um, I have the K&N air filter and, uh, cabin filters, so, um, I'm, those are reusable, alright? So I, I'm gonna do my first clean, probably, we'll probably do 30,000 miles. I should probably do it now, but you can do it whenever, man. <laughs> That's the thing. And then, uh, change the oil, alright? That's it. That's the major stuff, and and maybe rotate the tires, all right. But uh, so that'll be in five thousand miles, all right. Um, am I going to shoot a video about it? I, I will probably do a video. Yeah, I'll, I'll shoot a video on it. This, if it's the first time I'm doing it, I will make a video about it so you guys can see uh, what it looks like to do the do the thing on it, all right. Um, but uh, the next one is going to be kind of a big service, all right. Um, it's a, it's change the air filter and change the cabin filter, which literally takes like ten. <laughs> okay, and then and then the oil change. I haven't done the oil change on this. It looks pretty easy. All right, um, I, I've never done it, but um, we'll we'll actually do it. All right, I think it's the same as any Rav4. Uh, Toyota is just really their engineering and stuff is very you know uh, mechanic friendly. Is what I say. All right, um, I've been working. I, I've seen the the progression of like the Toyotas. How just how every generation they just get easier and easier to work on the maintenance is easier they really they really design these things to last forever man I'm, I'm, and I'm really happy with that and that's the reason I bought a Toyota right is uh, the reliability right? and, and it, it's for real man I'm telling you <laughs> um, all, the old Toyotas are very reliable old Toyotas are very reliable and new Toyotas are very reliable you, we, we, you know if you bought a Toyota you gotta I mean I'm not gonna lie I'm sure there's some lemons out there and stuff and I, I do have some issues with this vehicle with the with the noisy heater and all that stuff but um, hopefully I won't um, develop any like really big issues all right I still got the warranty and I think there's like a hundred fifty thousand mile uh, hybrid warranty so anything to do with the hybrid system they'll cover it uh, also that cable gate thing I think I think that's covered by Toyota now also if something happens to it they'll they'll fix it all right so hopefully <laughs> I don't live in an area where that that's gonna be a big problem is what I want to say okay Okay, so that's the end of my, my 25,000 mile service vlog. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It, it, it was kind of long because the, the, the kind of tour, the lot tour was long because there's a lot of vehicles here, man. There's a lot. If I see something cool, I'm going to, I'm going to make a video about it. All right. So yeah. All right. So like in, uh, so that's it. No more Toyota care. Um, I, I, uh, to tell you the truth, I honestly didn't even want to bring it in today. I said, hey, you know what? You paid for it already. You might as well get it, all right? It's already included in the purchase price of the vehicle. Two years, uh, 25,000 miles, and I got every one, all right? So um, I made sure I get my money's worth, guys. So this, um, the one thing about the RAV4 Prime is it is not a cheap vehicle, all right? For, this is, uh, I think, I think it was 41 or 42,000 because it had like some kind of option on it. I did not see a single RAV4 Prime on the lot, all right? So you could tell it's still a very, very popular vehicle and it's still hard to find, all right? Uh, these last two years, um, I, I've been looking at like like Reddit posts and stuff and people have been trying to buy it and buy it and they can't get one, all right? So I got very lucky. I got one in, like within a week of shopping, <laughs> okay? Uh, but I did it through a, a program. Um, so so I, I got like $10,000 off of it. And it's still very expensive, and I'm still paying it off. Yeah, if you guys are wondering, I've still got about thirteen thousand dollars left on my car loan. All right, um, it's two percent. I'm not, you know, uh, not really big deal about the the thing. I just bought a motorcycle too, <laughs> so I'm gonna so I'm gonna focus on paying off the motorcycle loan because that's a ten percent, almost a ten percent uh, interest on that. So I'm gonna try to pay that off right away. But it's it's a very small loan. All right. But yeah, that's, I didn't have the money to buy it. And yeah, so, but anyway, I've got to pay that on top of this now. 
it's, I'm, I'm like swimming in debt, all right? But I have to say, the RAV4 Prime has made my life better, all right? It, it's, it's, it's like just how I envisioned it. It's like putting, uh, putting my Previa and my Prius together, all right? It, Put it, put it together and you get RAV4, all right? I don't got the space of the Previa and I don't have quite have the, the, actually the gas mileage, my old Prius and this gets the same gas mileage, man. It's nuts. It's nuts how uh, how um, fuel efficient this thing is, man. I, I am very happy with the, the fuel economy and the, the EV thing power. It seems like it gets the same range with the, uh, with the Vulcan tires too, all right? The all-terrain tires, they're just a little noisier, you know? That's from what I had noticed. But other than that, they, they look freaking badass too. So <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. So, um, uh, so aftermarket wheels will have to wait, guys. Um, I want to get some aftermarket wheels, but at least the good thing is I don't have to worry about people stealing my wheels. All right. Well, I, I I guess somebody would steal OEM wheels, but yeah, let's hope that doesn't happen. All right? The funny thing is I bought the wheel locks for them already. I don't even have the wheels yet. All right, guys. Okay. Anyway, so that's the end of my twenty-five thousand mile service vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed. He's Mig out. All right, he's Mig here, and so here's a little more info about our my last service. Uh, my service advisor was Juan Roman. This time I get a different guy every time, guys. That's his contact info. All right, if you if you want to call Juan and set up a some kind of service appointment, you can call him. But probably just better to call the service department. Okay, but he's one of the dudes working there. All right, we did the 25,000 mile service, and I'm assuming they did all of this stuff. They don't do this because it says Hawaii only here, okay? But this is all the basic stuff that they do. All right, um, check the installation of the driver's floor mat, inspect and adjust all fluids, inspect DC-DC converter air intake filter, inspect wiper blades, rotate the tires, and visually inspect the brake lining drums. So you can do that when you rotate the tires, all right? Um, I did down at Stevens Creek Toyota, like where I had it done before. Today was June 5th, 2023, and we had 24,864 miles when we brought it in, all right? So, okay, and then so the next one, guys, is the big one, all right? And it's the one that they're not going to do for free. <laughs> That's the funny thing, right? It's pretty much the same stuff, all right? Except uh, this one, replace the cabin air filter, replace engine air filter, replace engine oil and oil filter, okay? Um, pretty much the big one is the engine oil and filter, all right? Um, the cabin air filter and the engine air filter, I have k and filters, so we're not going to replace them. We're going to clean them, all right? Clean them and re-oil them. Um, so look forward to a video on that because I've never done it before on this vehicle, all right? Cool. Okay, so yeah, there you go. Uh, so ends the end of my uh, Toyota Care. Um, now it's going to be uh, Merlin Care or Hades Omega Care. <laughs> All right, here's the big